Greetings, bookworms, and welcome to the Bearded Book Club's production of Lyrael by Garth Nix. If you want to follow along in this and all of our productions, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all new videos as well as when we do our live shows. If you would like to support Bearded Book Club, you could do so in two ways, both of which are listed in this video's description. Number one, you can become a Patreon and support us on a regular basis. Or number two, you can go to our Amazon wish list and send us a book as a one-time donation. This series is made possible by Cody Nimrod, who did just that and sent us this novel. So without further ado, let us continue. Chapter 5 An Unexpected Opportunity Lirel wasn't quite sure how they got back into the paper wing hangar so quickly. She knew she was grabbed by more pairs of hands than seemed possible for seven people, and hustled across the snow much more uncomfortably than she could have managed on her own. For a few seconds, she thought they were very, very angry with her. Then she realized they were just cold and wanted to get back inside. Once all were inside, it was clear that while the Claire were not exactly furious, they weren't too happy either. Han snatched off her cap, goggles, and scarf without regard for the hair that was caught up in them, and seven somewhat wind-chilled faces looked down at her. Ariel's daughter, said Sinar, as if she were identifying a flower or a plant, dredging it up from a list. Lirael, not on the roster of the Watch, therefore not yet with a sight, is that correct? Y yes stammered Lirael. No one had ever peered at her so intently before, and she generally avoided talking to other people, particularly fully-fledged Claire. Important Claire made her nervous even when she was behaving herself. Now there were seven of them giving her their undivided attention. She wished she could somehow sink through the floor and reappear in her own room. Why were you hiding out there? asked the old Claire, who Lirael suddenly remembered was named Miriel. Why aren't you at the Awakening? There was no warmth in her voice at all, just cold authority. Belatedly, Lirael remembered that this gray-haired, leather-faced old woman was also the commander of the Claire's rangers, who hunted and patrolled across Star Mountain Sunfall, the glacier in the river valley. They dealt with everything from lost travelers to foolish bandits or marauding beasts and were not to be trifled with. Mirel asked her question again, but Lirael couldn't answer. Tears came into her eyes, though she managed to hold them back. Then, when it seemed Mira was about to shake both answers and tears out of her, she said the first thing that came into her head. It's my birthday. I'm fourteen. For some reason, this seemed to be the right thing to say. All the Claire relaxed, and Mirel looked let go of her shoulders. Lirel winced. The woman had gripped her hard enough to leave bruises. So you're fourteen, said Sinar, much more kindly than Mirel, and you're worried because the sight hasn't woken in you? Lirel nodded, not trusting herself to speak. It comes late to some of us, continued Sinar, her eyes warm and understanding, but often the later it is, the more strongly it wakes. The sight did not come to me and Rael till we were sixteen. Has no one told you that? Lirel looked up, fully meeting the Claire's gaze for the first time, her eyes wide with shock. Sixteen? That was impossible. No, she said, the surprise and relief clear in her voice. Not sixteen. Yes, said Rael, smiling, taking over where Sonar left off. Sixteen and a half, in fact. We thought it would never come. But it did. I suppose you couldn't bear another awakening. Is that why you came up here? Yes, said Lirael, a small smile beginning to creep across her own face. Sixteen. That meant there was hope for her yet. She felt like jumping forward and hugging everybody, even Morel, and running down the star mount stair, yelling for joy. All of a sudden, her plan to kill herself seemed incredibly stupid, and the hatching of it long ago and far away. Part of our problem back then was having too much time to think about our lack of the sight, said Sonar. We had not missed the signs of relief in Lirael's face and posture. Since we weren't part of the watch and didn't have the sight training, of course we didn't want to do extra shifts on the roster duties either. 
No, agreed Lirael hurriedly. Who would want to clean toilets or wash dishes any more than they had to? It wasn't usual for us to be assigned to a post before we turned 18, continued Rael. But we asked, and the watch agreed, that we should be given proper work. So we joined the paper wing flight and learned to fly. That was in the time before the return of the king, when everything was much more dangerous and unsettled. So we flew far more patrols and farther afield than we do now. After only a year of flying, the sight woke in us. It could have been an awful year, as was the one before it, waiting and hoping for the gift, but we were too busy to even think about it much. Do you think that proper work might help you too? Yes, replied Lirel fervently. A post would free her from the child's tunic, let her wear the clothes of a working Clare. It would also give her somewhere to go, away from the younger children and Aunt Kirith. She might even be able to stay away from awakenings, depending on what the work was. The question is, what work would suit you best, mused Sinar. I do not think we have ever seen you, so that's no help. Is there any posting you would particularly like? The rangers, paper wing flight, the merchant office, the bank, building and construction, the infirmary, the steamworks. I don't know, said Lirael, trying to think of all the many and various jobs the Clare did, in addition to the rostered community duties. What are you good at? asked Mirel. She looked Lirael up and down, clearly measuring her up as a potential recruit for the rangers. The slight lift of her nose showed that she didn't seem to think much of Lirael's potential. How's your sword craft and archery? Not very good, replied Lirael guiltily, thinking of all the practice sessions she'd missed lately, having chosen to mope in her room instead. I'm best at charter magic, I think, and music. Perhaps the paper wings, then, said Sonar. Then she frowned and looked at the others, though fourteen is a, perhaps a shade too young. They can be a bad influence. Lirel glanced at the paper wings and couldn't hold back a small shiver. She liked the idea of flying, but the paper wings frightened her a bit. There was something creepy about their being alive and having their own personalities. <coughs> <clears throat> what would happen if she had to talk to one of them all the time? She hated talking to people, let alone paper wings. Please, said Lirael, pursuing that thought to the logical place where she could avoid people the most. I think I would like to work in the library. The library? repeated Sonar, looking troubled. That can be dangerous to a girl of fourteen, or a woman of forty for that matter. Only in parts, said Rael, the old levels. You can't work in the library without going into the old levels, said Morel somberly, at least some of the time. I wouldn't be keen on going to some parts of the library myself. Lirael listened, wondering what they were talking about. The great library of the Clare was enormous, but she had never heard of the old levels. She knew the general layout well. The library was shaped like a nautilus shell, a continuous tunnel that wound down into the mountain into an ever-tightening spiral. This main spiral was enormously long, twisting ramp that took you from the high reaches of the mountain down past the level of the valley floor several thousand feet below. Off the main spiral there were countless other corridors, rooms, halls, and strange chambers. Many were full of the Clare's written records, mainly documenting the prophecies and visions of many generations of seers, but they also contained books and papers from all over the kingdom books of magic and mystery, knowledge both ancient and new, scrolls, maps, spells, recipes, inventory, stories, true tales, and Charter knew what else. In addition to all these written works, <coughs> the Great Library also housed other things. There were old armories within it, containing weapons and armor that had not been used for centuries, but still stayed bright and new. There were rooms full of odd paraphernalia that no one now knew how to use. There were chambers where dressmakers' dummies stood fully clothed, displaying the fashions of bygone Clare or the wildly different costumes of the barbaric North. There were greenhouses tending, tended by sendings with charter marks for light as bright as the sun. There were rooms of total darkness swallowing up the light and anyone foolish enough to enter unprepared. Lirael had seen some of the library on carefully 
escorted excursions with the rest of her year gathering. She had always hankered to enter the doors they passed, to step across the red rope barriers that marked corridors or tunnels where only authorized librarians might pass. Why do you want to work there? asked Sinar. It, it's interesting, stammered Lirael, uncertain how she should reply. She didn't want to admit that the library would be the best place to hide away from Mother Claire, and in the back of her mind she hadn't forgotten that in the library she might find a spell to painlessly end her life. Not now, of course, now she knew that the sight might come, but later, if she grew older and older without the sight and the black despair welled up again inside her, as it had done earlier today. It is interesting, replied Sinar, but there are dangerous things and dangerous knowledge in the library, too. Does that bother you? I don't know, said Lirael honestly. It would depend on what it is. But I really would like to work there. She paused and then said in a very low voice, I do want to be busy, as you said, and forget about not having the sight. The Claire turned away from Lirael then and gathered together in a tight circle that excluded her, speaking in whispers. Lirael watched anxiously, aware that something momentous was going to happen to her life. The day had been horrible, but now she had hope again. The Claire stopped whispering. Lirael looked at them through the fall of her hair, glad that it hid her face. She didn't want them to see how badly she wanted to let her work. Wanted them to let her work. Since it is your birthday, said Sinar, and because we believe it will be best, we have decided that we will put you to work as you ask in the great library. You should report there tomorrow morning to Van Sell, the chief librarian. Unless she finds you unsuitable for some reason, you will become a third assistant librarian. Thank you, cried Lirael. It came out as a croak, so she had to say it again. Thank you. There's one more thing, said Sinar, and she came and stood so close that Lirael had to look up and meet her eyes. You heard talk today that you should not have heard. Indeed, you have seen a visit that did not take place. The stability of a kingdom is a fragile thing, Lirael, and easily upset. Sabriel and Touchstone would not speak so freely elsewhere or to a different audience. I won't say anything to anyone, said Lirael. I don't talk, really. You won't remember, said Rael, who had moved around behind her. She gently released the spell she'd held ready, cupped in her hand. Before Lirael could even think about countering it, a chain of bright charter marks fell over her head, gripping her at the temples. At least not until you need to remember, continued Rael. You will recall everything you have done today, save the visit of Sabriel and Touchstone. That memory will be gone, replaced by a walk on the terrace and a chance meeting with us here. You seemed troubled, so we talked of work and the gaining of the sight. That is how you gained your new post, Lirael. You will remember that, and no more. Yes, replied Lirael, words rolling off her lips so slowly that she seemed to be drunk or incredibly tired. The library. Tomorrow I report to Vancell, 